All right, dudes, let's talk about news. All right. We've got a number of things to talk about today. I'm actually excited to get started here because we've got like six or seven stories. Some of them are like smaller things, right? Others are like you, you may have actually missed entirely because they, ha they happened relatively under the radar uh, for some, or maybe they were part of something that maybe you just didn't really have any interest in. So it didn't even cross, didn't even cross your virtual desk. Uh, so we're going to lead with the discussion about Apostle Zero or Apostle O and Roll20. Uh, most of you guys should know what Roll20 is. Roll20 is a site for people who, uh, who play d d to go through and basically set up their, their campaigns. And uh, it's basically a virtual kind of board that you can go through and build your old game board and everything and have all of your pieces in place and have all your character stat sheets and build your characters out and whatever else. And it's basically, it's, it's a centralized place to essentially, to basically have what you would have, what you would have on a real tabletop, tabletop, uh, if you're playing D&D in person. Now, you're probably, you're probably thinking like, it's like, oh God, I, I don't do that kind of stuff. So I don't really, I don't really, I don't even know what Roll20 is, right? Well, I just explained that part to you. The rest of this is actually pretty fucking interesting. So I caught this thing. This thing popped up on, uh, uh, what was it? Just a couple days, yeah, a couple days ago. Uh, and this guy says, after five, after five years on Roll20, I just canceled and deleted my account. 50,000.7 upvotes. So it's, this is a busy thread. And when we caught it, you know, we were sharing on Discord and talking about it. Uh, yeah, it was, it was just getting started. This wasn't even the original thread, actually. <laughs> uh, right, this is, oh, no, this is, this is the original. This is the original because it's an r slash dnd. Um, and so this is a super long post, but the TLDR is pretty good. Uh, r slash roll20 admin Nolan T banned me from the subreddit for criticizing roll20 and custom, and roll20 customer support backed him in the decision. So, so, <laughs> this is the TLDR for like the initial thing, right? Uh, he does go through and tell, basically what happened was, he made a post that was, uh, I guess you could say critical of the, um, uh, of, of Roll20. And he had been, he had been a paying subscriber for five years. Uh, now, I believe I have the actual, let me see, uh, the actual original, uh, post. He links it here, yeah, here, yeah, here you go. So he posted, uh, this here. We basically goes through and she's just basically having a discussion. Nothing necessarily too confrontational or whatever. Uh, it's just, it's actually not confrontational at all. I said, he's just basically talking about, oh, that's really cool. Thank you. Blah, blah, blah. You know, like that's it. That's his only other post. Uh, and then there's the uh, the initial one here Hold on uh, the one that I guess is in question. And it was his post where he basically lists a kind of a laundry list of, of, of things that he wants to see uh, done in the engine. Now he uses, I would say, fairly neutral, uh, um, verbiage for like getting his points across but you know in some cases you can you get a little bit of, of, of snark right he says the entire engine appears to use the dom to render rather than webgl canvas which is stupid for an application of the scope i believe this is the root cause of performance issues uh he said there is a slight delay the menu seems slow and unresponsive roll 20 renders blah, 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 blah. like he's not like i mean like that's probably the most <laughs> he said it's stupid to use something of this for, for this particular scope use this for this particular scope right uh but for the most part you read through and he's just basically listing all the things that he feels would be great in the um uh on roll 20 okay no big deal uh but he got banned from from roll 20 for some reason and that's when he went pull up this post he's like well, that's really weird i'm banned because of these two posts that doesn't make any sense uh and he petitioned he's like, he's like wait what why and he said because and he asked like why was he banned and the response he got back was uh and i'm taking a lot of this up just from memory here is that he um his name was too similar to somebody else that was banned like a year ago or something. So he got banned because his username was too similar to somebody else. Uh, and that was, and that was the extent of it. Somebody else got banned for something before and they saw his, like, I guess they saw his lengthy write up of, of criticism, a little bit of critique for the site. And they were like, that must be the same guy. His name is Apostle, uh, Apostle O. And the other guy's name was Apostle of Truth. Now, the guy who the guy who was banned, Apostle, he goes through and he he uses this site called the Reddit Analyzer to like basically show with data that these are two totally separate sites. 
because Reddit, Reddit's uh, moderators don't have the ability to compare IP addresses. So that's why they're like, oh, yeah, well, it's, they guys, you guys uh, talk the same or something and and all that and, and, and whatever. And so you're banned. And so he goes through all of this, all of, of, of these links to figure out what the fuck, like why, why he would associate them with this other guy, right? Are they banning all users of apostolate? I know, exactly. Is, is that crazy? And so he went through and he tried to go find the the last post that potentially would have got him the other guy ba banned from um uh, uh from roll 20 and he finds this post and the reason why he thinks this is the one that is uh that, that he was banned for is because right below that nolan t the the uh, the moderator for the subreddit goes through and says i've gone ahead and removed apostle of truth from roll 20 subreddit the reason history i was seeking the opportunity to drag the roll 20 staff uh, on a subreddit, da, 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 da. basically, he doesn't like it because he's talking shit about him or whatever, right? Um, that, that all that aside, <laughs> that all that aside, hey, Huff, wait, 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 shh, shh, shh. slow down. All of that aside, it's still dumb to associate somebody with another account simply because they share, you know, a part of that username, especially Apostle, for fuck's sake, and in D&D, &D. Apostle and D&D. Really? I feel like Bishop, like <laughs> all, all these like kind of general terms that somebody might, you know, take on if they're associated with the, uh, with, you know, fantasy, high fantasy, whatever, are kind of RPing. It's just ridiculous. Uh, so he goes on. Notice we're still scrolling. This is the same post. Okay. Because this is the same fucking post. So he goes through and he, he sends out, uh, he sends out all this data that he, he had accumulated and he said, um, he said he, he was like, like, look, look at all the look at all this stuff. Like none of this stuff points to to me being even remotely associated with this guy. It doesn't even make any sense. Why would I why would I do that? Uh and he finally sent a, a follow-up and he said, It's been 24 hours now, I'm still banned, and you haven't responded to my evidence of my defense. If you truly believe this was an alternate account, you could escalate the issues to Reddit admin to verify the IPs and ban me all together. And then he says, you're going to, you're going to take a five year paying customer and, and promote your service and basically throw it down the train. And so, um, and there's a, there's a full message chain, by the way, that's not all he wrote. So there's actually even more text behind this link right here. Uh, <laughs> so he sent an email then to, uh, to, uh, um, to roll twenties, actual, uh, uh, customer service staff. And <clears throat> he said, I received no response for over a day. Uh, I was just not upset. I was not just upset with the old T, but also at roll 20 support in general. And so he sent another uh, message to the Roll20 moderator queue, rather than just Nolan T, uh, and another email, pretty much the same content outlining the facts above, basically saying that it's been 36 hours, all that stuff, right? And he reposts all of the shit that he had done. And he's, now he adds at the end, if the ban is not lifted and I do not receive an apology from Nolan T by tomorrow morning, I am canceling my Roll20 accounts. And I will tell everybody that I've done so, okay? Uh, to summarize. So he sent a message on Twitter as well, try to get their attention. And he's, he's documented this. Uh, he say, finally received a response via admin. He says, hi, Corey. We had reached out to Adred admins to confirm or deny whether or not the, the other account shared on the IP address. However, this influx of messages, particularly in response to a ban from a subreddit where you have only posted twice, has cause for concern, just as much as the initial belief of ban evasion. It is because it's due to this concern that we will be maintaining your ban from the subreddit. How dare you? Right? How, how dare you? Be upset that you were wrongfully accused and banned from a service that you've paid into for so many years. How fucking dare you be offended by that? Oh my god, what kind of a person are you? And so he says, I couldn't believe what I was reading. I still can't believe it. They they're backing up. They're following up. They're gonna follow up with the red. They're gonna follow up with the red admins to confirm my defense. But they're gonna uphold the ban because I got upset by it. Just wow. <laughs> So, he writes back, of course. <laughs> he says, I'm just now noticing the spelling errors in that email. I was pretty mad when I was writing it. Of course he was. Uh, so, he is attached to two images. One showing canceled account and one showing deleted account. Here are all the screenshots together. Uh, now that now, so now that I had a bit to cool off, he, see, he admits it's a bit of an overreaction. But, but still, he's still not at fault here. Uh, so, it's... The thing, and this is hilarious, by the way, and I actually have it over here, bigger for you guys to see. 
But the biggest thing that you guys should notice, the trend here, is this comment here from uh, from somebody who, well, on general Reddit, not necessarily in this subreddit. And he says, coming in from r slash all, my main takeaway here is to never piss off people who, for who one of their main hobbies involves aggressive and thorough note taking. <laughs> now, now, the person in question, Nolan, Nolan T, you slash Nolan T, did uh, end up responding. And it's right down here. Sorry, this is the same post here. So he responds and he says, from Roll20's perspective, a summary of what occurred. And so he goes through and basically says that he didn't like that the person was sending sending messages that he did, that he was banned. Um, if the ban is not lifted, uh, then I did, he basically highlights this. And he said, and then here, and then this is the best, this is the best part. Two hours ago, we got the response from Reddit admins that accounts do not, that the accounts do not show an IP match and for this unfortunate and frustrating coincidence, I'm sorry. We've never banned the user from our site or on our, our on-site forums. They made the decision to delete their own account. I stand with my account uh, administration staff and our decision to maintain a subreddit ban due to the, the level of this escalation. <laughs> and I want to make sure if you guys missed that in the chat earlier, this is... Nolan T. Jones, co-founder and managing partner of Roll20. That's... So this whole time, like, he's basically dealing with the same guy or his staff or whatever. Uh, yeah, of course the, the, the staff is not going to go against what the founder says. But why can't the founder just fucking, like, come off his shit and just be like, Yeah, yeah, you know, we're sorry, we fucked up, right? So customer is mad that you randomly ban it for no good reason and you apologize for banning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just isn't this just it's just insane that they would that that he would think this is okay. You know what? It's like why why not be the, the the bigger person here and be like, hey, you know what? Wow, this whole thing must have been incredibly frustrating for you. And I really don't want anybody on our site to have this kind of experience. I'm terribly sorry about it. I obviously made uh, you know had uh, uh I fucked that up. Um maybe perhaps say that he's gonna like stepping down from the moderation team but he doesn't mention that here right uh just nothing just nothing it does absolutely nothing and just ends up making it worse probably to, have, just to save fucking ego or something right don't worry they're all blank just so you know they're all blank all these across the top are blank they're just here so that way you guys can't see what news is coming up huh all right so there is follow-up uh subreddit status and moderation changes for roll 20 Hello everyone! There has been an important discussion over the last 24 hours about the way Roll20 subreddit is moderated. When Roll20 started, we founded a subreddit because we were Reddit users ourselves and wanted to give to grow a community here. Now that the subreddit has become well established, we've been listening, we've heard your opinions on this issue, and as a result we are taking immediate action to change the way our subreddit is moderated. We understand that we let our community down and we're sorry for that. We have asked the mods of r slash LFG to step in and become new moderators of this community. We, li we leave it up to them to decide the rules of this community going forward and have removed Roll20 staff from the moderation team of this subreddit. In addition, the 13 users previously banned from the subreddit have been unbanned. No thank you, or no, no sorry, no, no apologies, no, like, just nothing else. No, if you pin the tabs, you still show this whole, whole thing. Well, mine did, anyways. Um, I had actually make more tabs to move them over. Stop talking about the production, all right? Production's fine. <laughs> yes, so uh he un he they unbanned the so the guy is unbanned now. Now he now he could come back. He could come back and uh and, and enjoy his time at R slash roll twenty. Um It was It was so empty such a such an empty such an empty apology, you know? Just such a such a fucking empty this is actually Digi Who five point five, I think. Uh <laughs> And, and then even the top comment, it's like, honestly, Nolan T is the one that should apologize, not a staff member. And it's like, it's not even an apology. It's an effort to move past the events of the past 24 hours. Exactly right. Like, it's just basically like, you know what? We'll just, we'll just basically pretend like nothing happened and we'll move on and uh, keep going from there. And <laughs> that's it. No nothing else will become of it. Just, just crazy. Just fucking crazy. I can tell you that there's been a lot of people that have canceled their accounts over this fiasco maybe not so much because they want to like so not support like this level of shittiness 
Uh, but also because, oh, hey, you know what? I never used that account. I should go close it. Now's a good time to do so. <laughs> oh, man. So that's uh, that's roll 20. There are other there are alter alternative sites. Uh, if you just Google it, there are there are uh, alternative sites out there. Uh, it is it is. Um, I mean, it is kind of like a mainstay. It is a pretty common, commonly used thing. So, you know, roll 50. Yeah, that's what you roll 21. Where's roll 21? Yeah, well, I guess it wouldn't really work, actually. It does, doesn't fit the game. Uh, <laughs> I know, I didn't think that far ahead, okay? For me, no, I didn't think that far ahead. I was like, hold on a second, we're not talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> Show me a 21-sided, eh, whatever. <sighs> At last, Twitter tab is not a Bowsette post. Okay, I didn't plan on talking about Bowsette. All right? Because I feel like we beat that into the ground. After this weekend, it's going to be gone. All the models out there who have not managed to... Uh, to get your get their their cosplays and their lewds and their nudes and all that shit sent out to all of their Patreon members before the end of this week, uh, they might as well just forget about it because anybody that does it next week going forward, they pretty much they're they're it's, it's old news. That's old. That's old meme. That's old meme. That's old. That's an old fucking meme now. <laughs> so you got you got to get it in fast, man. It's great. Listen though, it is actually pretty insane how quickly this went from a just a cartoon hand-drawn comic meme on like friday or something thursday i don't even know what it's like last week to basically becoming you know to to translate into you know these steamy cosplay slash lewd slash nudes and i could say that because the character is basically inherently sexy because of the way that they're uh they're being presented it's like oh i got the sexy bowsette what's up uh, <laughs> but yeah it is it is um it is just crazy to turn around all that. And so now, now it's like, I wonder in the future when we have new memes that come down, um, are we going to be like, oh, are we going to see, are we going to see, you know, Jessica, Jessica, uh, make a, make a, uh, cosplay of it. K-Bear, is she going to get a, a, a cosplay of it? So, you know, it's like, what are we going to see? Sab Sabrina Nicole, are we going to see, uh, <laughs> like that's, that's the thing. It's like, are we going to see like how quickly it's a turn, turnaround time? I'm more impressed by the quality of the costumes at that time. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, they, they're so fast with making the damn things and then shooting them and then turn around and getting the, the content out to everybody. Uh, they're so quick with doing that. It's like. What's the next thing? But what was the thing before? Oh yeah, like for a while there, it was whenever there was a meme or something like a video-based meme, we would get a shmoyo. What is it? Shmoyo, Shlo, shlomoyo, Shlom, shlomoyo. The the auto tune guys. Uh, they would make like an auto tune remix of it. Uh, <clears throat> that was like what we had to look forward to. It's like, oh, how quickly can we get shmoyo? Yeah, okay, there you go. Uh, sh sh shmoyo, shmoyo. Uh, there was yo. It was it was like it was like something crazy would happen in the news. It was like, oh man, how quickly can we get a uh, make a remix of that out? Um, and so it's like, now it's like, now it's like memes turn into, uh, memes to dreams, like actually <laughs> straight to your Patreon inbox. Uh, you only need 10% of a costume, but that 10% has to be good. It has to be good. The pieces have to look pretty good. You know, some of the work that goes behind that shit is insane. Like they're like leather workers and like armor, like they're smiths and they have like these crazy casts and shit they build. It's fucking crazy. It's crazy. Um, bone spikes for the majority of the costume. No, no, that shells. That shell is hard. <laughs> Why? Well, I, I would think so. I mean, you try to make a sh spiky shell. Uh, no, the shell. I feel like the shell is a big part of it. And all of what are the other armor they have floating around? It. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So more news. Let's do it. Bring home Blizzard Classic. Holy shit! The demo. With the virtual ticket, bring it home, play it at home. Oh my god, how much? How much do I have to pay to get in this thing? Fifty bucks. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars will get you access to the classic, the WoW classic demo during BlizzCon to end when BlizzCon ends, or within within that time period, at some point. $50. It's $50 for, as, as I see it fly by on chat here. Yeah, it's, you're basically paying $50 for a game you've already played before that's supposed to be in the same condition as it was that you played it 12, 15 years ago, however long it's been. Uh, and it's for a demo and you're going to play it for a limited amount of time. 
Like that's that's what you're paying for. Uh and yes, and yes, also, Zebrios, uh for potentially two hours of content. Which it would be less than two hours of content. Or it has to be something like around there. Uh of content. But in terms of like how much space they give you to explore, they might want you to go out and explore and do all that stuff. Um and not to mention, you're also not getting a mount or a pet. You get a cape, but you're not getting a mount or a pet this time around. So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's like I feel like you're you're losing stuff on one side, and then the gain is it doesn't feel like it's it has much permanence to it. Uh, yeah, that's Zelgus. Yeah, it, do you want to let me borrow your your uh, your? I'll, I'll give you fifty dollars if you let, let me borrow your cassette player. Your Walkman. Pets cost extra, but can I kill? Yeah, you can still kill. Yeah, you go ten, kill ten rats. Sure. Yeah. How many CDs is that gonna be? Huh, quite a few. Uh, now I find out firsthand what my friend is talking about when he talks about the old days. Yeah, so that's the thing. So that's the people that uh, uh, Raptor. Um, yeah, people don't remember because some of them didn't play it then. You know, don't forget like Wrath was like the biggest influ influx of of uh, um, I could say burst influx of players that the game received. Uh, and, you know, before that, TBC may have been one, but, like, Vanilla was not that big, you know? Like, it was big. It was, it was bigger than anything else at the time, but it wasn't as big as what the peak, and, and especially what the overall player base, uh, total is. Think about every player, right? That, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, think about every player that's ever, like, played the game for, like, six months and then left. They might have you know, 5 million active subscribers, I don't know what the number is, uh, but they have had like 100 million people actually play the game. Uh, but yeah, they're going to find out the hard way what Vanilla WoW uh, is like. <laughs> like, it's going to be, it's going to be one of those things that I feel like, here's what we're going to see. We're going to see people get in, play it, and then they're going to go to r slash WoW, and they're going to be like, wow, this is really fucking hard. As somebody who never played classic, that's how it's gonna. Every, they're all gonna start. All these testimonials. As somebody who didn't play classic, here's my take. Here is just gonna be fucking flooded. There's gonna be a. Ma they should make like a mass testimonial thread. Yeah, you know, everybody that <laughs> didn't play classic that want to tell us what your opinions are, please put it in one of this maximum. This uh, this entire thread here. That's a compilation. Um, and then R slash classic. Wow will get a massive influx of people. Right now, it's it's pretty, like... Right now, it's pretty, uh, um... Pretty tame, like, you know, in terms of, like, uh, uh, how many people are there, but it's starting to pick up. It's picking up. And the more they talk about Classic WoW, the bigger it's gonna get. For sure. Five-minute pa pally buff, yep. Oh, man. I'm not looking forward to Classic Demo, but I am hoping they bring to the... Uh, 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 what is the... <laughs> Oh, slow down, guys! Uh, <laughs> I want to bring in some future tickets so we can play a demo of the new X Packs. Yes, yes, that is that's something else that we're gonna talk about for sure. Um, let's do that right now, actually. So yeah, the this is actually a big deal for like future projects that Blizzard has because it means that you can potentially play it, you know, pay into something that's new uh, that you would normally only be able to experience at the convention. And right now, it's just WoW Classic, but in the future, it could be. Every game demo they have on the floor is available to play at home. And you could have your own in-home experience without having the lines and everything. Because I, I'm, I'm telling you, the lines the lines can be uh, pretty crazy at BlizzCon. Like, pretty significant <laughs> to wait for anything. So you figure if there's, like, uh, Diablo 4 and uh, maybe a new Overwatch character uh, or some new bullshit in HOTS, uh, <laughs> and then like maybe on top of that a new expansion for a while or, or a content or some major content update or whatever and you basically have a ptr or something you could download or have it enabled in games so you could actually go through and play as that thing uh, as part of your blizzcon weekend um that's gonna that's gonna be a, a big money maker for blizzard uh going forward right now it's just classic right now it's just classic but later it could definitely be a lot of shit uh, is it gonna, uh, they're going to include raids and classic. I'd love to see them bring back classic next with 40 man. Yes. Yeah, no, they're gonna, they're gonna, this, it's a post. Well, we're gonna get, we're gonna get information. I'll be honest. I say yes, because it's like, yes, of course they will. That doesn't necessarily mean yes, they will. 
Uh, it just means that I think, yeah, they, they, of course they would do that. But we're gonna, we're not gonna find out until uh, BlizzCon when they actually give us uh, the information. There are panels that are scheduled to discuss, um, to discuss the uh, uh, you know, Blizzard or WoW Classic. So it's gonna be. Uh, I mean, nothing else really matters. Really, just all that matters is the WoW Classic demo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, class, we have 1.12, yeah, Drums of War as a baseline. That's the thing. That's the important thing as a baseline because they're going to have to do something, right? They're going to have to do something to to appease to people who maybe don't think that they they can handle, you know, WoW Classic because of Blink. Something that can't be solved with like a mod, which everything was solved with the mod. We had tons of mods back then. Quest Tracker was a fucking mod. <laughs> like and now it's like it's like part of your just part of your overall experience. Uh, I think forty kids of forty kinds of kids that play well now uh, can barely handle one wipe. Oh, oh, oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm saying that uh, that the the level of patience versus entitlement uh, has tipped. <laughs> right, that you're saying it's like it used to be lots of patience, a little bit of entitlement, and now it's kind of gone this way where it's like now that that uh, that instant gratification that you used to have. Uh, they're used to having in like modern games uh while there are exceptions to the rule of course um are um are now in you know now that scales tilted in favor of like oh well, I, sh I should not have to put that well who would ever do this this is stupid this is crazy and that's what i'm saying those as somebody who didn't play wow classic here's my take on wow classic that's what we're gonna see in those things like wow like this this menial task is like completely silly. I would be happy if I would play Classic WoW if they remove this one thing. That's what you're gonna hear. If they remove this one thing, I will play WoW Classic. But the thing is, everyone's gonna have some different fucking thing they want removed or added or whatever, and it's gonna turn into modern WoW. And so that's that's the thing that we're gonna have to really uh, get from the developers and what exactly after the baseline, what exactly are we gonna get? What should we see? And that's only about a month away, guys. Month and a month, some change. Month and month and a week or so. Uh, that's crazy. You can buy classic when it comes out. Then yes. Oh yeah, yeah. You the same way that we had add-ons back in the day. Yeah, totally. I mean, you couldn't play WoW without add-ons. Like you really, really, man. It was, it was a hard game to play without add-ons. Like, like you think people are like nowadays. Nowadays, people have add-ons. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, well, it's, just, it's convenient for me to basically see, you know, all this stuff or do whatever and have all these things, whatever. So I guess, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's nice. Yeah, I need that stuff. I need that stuff. No, no, back then you fucking needed that shit. <laughs> yeah. How did you update the cursive? Oh, God. Oh, man. Uh, you say things that have been added to modern wild quality of life, things that people spent months asking for. Yes, 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 exactly. They're going to be asking for all of those, uh, all of those things that they consider quality of life stuff. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. The things that they should change are the Battle.net integration. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Uh, and bug fixes for game crashing with server calls. Yeah, totally. Uh, if you died and lost leveling and EQ, you deserved it. Uh, <laughs> had to go fetch your, your body. Hey, Furious Football and Ancient Rome, commoners would evacuate entire cities and acts of revolt called secessions of the plebeians, leaving the elite to fend for themselves. Wait, is this, is this, uh, is, is this a political statement? Uh, thank you. For the 24 months and the little tidbit there. Appreciate that. This is going in the VOD, by the way. It's probably going to go on YouTube. So uh, it was good. I, I, I didn't know that, actually. So we learned something new. Plebs. Fucking plebs. Uh, um, so, yeah, we're going to see a lot of pretty insane uh, back and forth. It's going to be polarizing because everything, everything that we do via current social media platforms is polarizing. And so it's going to be like, it's going to be, it's going to be bad. Someone's going to be like, um, what, what's, what's a good example of a quality of life thing that we, we all kind of take for granted right now. Uh, the quest tracker. There you go. The quest tracker that wasn't, uh, it wasn't in vanilla. I don't know if I'm fairly certain it was not. Yeah. Like someone would say, oh yeah, I, 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 I love this. I, I would love to have the quest tracker in, <clears throat> in, uh, Raid bars. See, you guys got better ones. <laughs> dual spec. Yeah, I'd love to have dual spec. You know, totally. Yeah, dual spec would be nice. I love that. That way I could do this and I could do this. And then someone's gonna be like, nah, dude, you don't need dual spec. You need it to be vanilla. And it's gonna be like, <sighs> it's like, it's fucking, they're gonna fight. It's like, oh my god, you fucking classic wow Nazi or something. There'll be some new word for it or something. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just one of those things. It's gonna be polarizing. It's gonna be fucking polarizing. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome.
plenty of news. Anything after... <clears throat> oh, you got automated? Lol. <laughs> he got automated for thought. Bot. Bot. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, wow. That, they're gonna have to let that go. They're gonna have to, like, uh, take that off automod because ThoughtBot might be coming back. But it's gonna suck. It's gonna suck compared to, uh, this new site that I, that I, that I know about that's coming soon. It's coming soon. <clears throat> the moon! Hey, thank you! What's that for? Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Zelgius got held up by automod. Also, there it is, led through ThoughtBot. Yep, yeah, you gotta be careful, gotta watch what you say. Thank you, Moon Tower. Um, so... <laughs> Can I just like allow thought in here? We could have discussions about thoughts. Bots, thought bots, fuck it, A. <laughs> Anyways. Um, no, Alec Zam. Uh, yeah, Thoughtbot was the original. Uh, and then Wowhead came up, and then Wowhead was purchased. Um, oh. and then Wowhead's company that purchased them purchased Thoughtbot. Or no, 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 I got that backwards. It went the other direction. Uh, Thoughtbot, I don't know, it was like a huge mess. But basically, it all became one thing, and then nobody took care of Thoughtbot. Uh, and basically let it rot and everybody hated it. So that was pretty much it. So Kenji, thank you so much and welcome. Welcome to the show. Let's keep going. Let's see. Next. Next. What was it? Affinity. Affinity Media. That's right. Bought Alakazam. Uh, then Wowhead. There you go. That's what it was. Then thought about then Wowhead. There it was. Yeah. Man, it was, it was, uh, <laughs> that was crazy back then. Just all the exchanging of hands, all these sites were going through. <clears throat> so. Next up, this is as as equal, if not more so, of a polarizing discussion than uh, uh, than <laughs> than classic versus slightly modified with quality of life improvements. Classic. Uh, Microsoft announces Xbox One keyboard and mouse support with Razer partnership. Whoa! This probably has like zero impact to any of you guys, but but my friend and I had a pretty interesting discussion uh, about it. I think we were both pretty, pretty intoxicated, so our discussion was definitely born from that. Uh, but look at this! Look at this! The X-Bone's gonna have a keyboard and mouse support! What does this mean? Like, what does it mean? Like, who, who do you think... Who do you think was like, Hey, we should put KBM on the X-Bone. Do you think it was Microsoft that was pushing for the partnership? Or do you think it was Razer that was pushing for the partnership? What do you think it was? Who, like, who do you think started this? Do you think it was equal on both sides? Anyone looking at Fortnite numbers? Ah, Nivek's on the right path here. Overwatch players? Sure. Sure. Razer? If it's almost, uh, if it's almost as if KBM is the way of go, yeah, yeah. Uh, the company that sells the keyboards and mouse? So, I'm not entirely sure who I think started this. But it does feel like to me, like they are, I mean, obviously succumbing to the fact that it's better. Um, but they are pulling in uh, that Microsoft is basically doing very little to introduce a new input method into their, um, into the Xbox. And when I say they're doing very little, I mean like all they have to do is just basically enable some drivers or send some drivers to the machine or flip a switch or fucking whatever, right? Uh, to allow native support for, you know, for these, uh, for these things, uh, for these, uh, these new input devices, keyboard and mouse. Um, the, what I feel like they're kind of doing is they're saying now that keyboard and mouse is the new pro controller, right? Because like, there's another generation of kids that are growing up basically just using touchscreen. You know, they're just using touchscreen and that's how they game. Uh, they will probably never play anything uh, using even, even a physical, like, you know, like a regular controller, uh, let alone keyboard and mouse. But we, for the most part, know, especially with any FPS, um, that your best, the best way to go is going to be uh, pr precision wise and speed wise. Uh, is definitely the um, uh, the controller. Overall, there are players who are with controller. I know it's, it's going to happen. It's going to be in the comments too. The person with the controller is like, you know, super good, better than all like, KBM players I've ever seen. It's like, yeah, there's going to be those like outliers and the people that are up there. But the curve to get there is going to be so fucking steep. Whereas the curve to get good with a KBM is much more gradual. So, 
Yeah, those players do exist. Those elite fucking players with their controllers and fucking awesome thumbs and shit. Hell yeah. But in general, you can find a bigger group of of more better than average players using KBM. Um, so, and that's based off of zero data, by the way. I just made all that shit up. But I made that up a long time ago when Josh and I were first going through our little bickering back and forth about whether or not what's better for fucking Destiny 1. We had that discussion already. Uh, so... Yeah, like Back to the Future. Yo, use your hands to play. It's supposed to be a child's game. So the having the uh, uh, innate support for um, for the Xbox One, uh, for sorry, for uh, uh, keyboard keyboard and mouse for the Xbox One is just basically saying this is your pro controller. So all of you guys who are playing Fortnite or playing PUBG or playing you know uh, whatever other you know first person shooter Halo. Like this is going to be the pro controller, and so that's the route that they're going. To, that's 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 the route they're going with. You can learn how to play on a controller, right? But if you want to be a professional at this, you're going to have to go with something like this. Absolutely. Um, Warframe will patch it. Yeah, the developers got to patch it in. They will have to patch in the actual support itself. Uh, it won't just work with everything, unfortunately. Which is going to be a, that's going to be a little bit of a growing pain for them. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of games that just don't support it. And someone's going to be like, oh, yeah, and I got all set up. I got my KBM here. And you have the same game that you play on uh, on on PC. Maybe for Xbox has not been patched in, you know? <clears throat> uh, I says, uh, no, what are you talking to? Let's see. Uh, they, found, they found when the Xbox was first coming out that nothing they could do would put control on the same level as the KBM. And nothing has changed in all those years. Oh, I'm not sure what exactly what you're referring to there. Uh, Brawlock, sorry. Um... All his Razor Deal is going to go is trying to get these console games to drift towards PC gaming. The space that PlayStation doesn't want to compete with them. Yeah, yeah. And guess who owns like both of those? <laughs> Microsoft is pushing people to Windows. <laughs> Man. Yeah, it's it's a win. It's a win for it's a win with very minimal actual effort needed for on Microsoft's part. It really is. They basically like Razor is just basically along for the, the ride. Uh, Razor is the one paying for this promotion to sell keyboards. Yeah. Aaron, thank you so much. 17 months. Thank you. Kaboom, it's still going back there. Um, so yeah, I'm very curious to see like how that uh, how that plays because the biggest re re issue that I have with like Zim, you mentioned Zim earlier today. Uh, Brian, shut up, I'm gonna see you in a couple hours. Uh, I really am. <laughs> the biggest issue, but thank you for 18 months. Uh, the biggest issue I have with um, with uh, KBMs is uh, uh, with the uh, Zim or any other kind of converter for, for a console is that mouse acceleration where is limit, you're basically limited to how quickly you can move the mouse. Even when you have the sensitivity up to 10, like in say Destiny, uh, you are still actually limited in how quickly you can move the mouse around because you're not actually sending a legit uh, uh, um, a mouse signal. You're sending basically interpretation of the mouse movement through uh, the uh, joysticks and that's it. So so yeah, you're still limited. And I know this from experience because I, obviously I had one. Uh, I sent it, I don't have it anymore because Shizzle has it, I sent it to Shizzle. Um, but yeah, it's uh, just the way it is. <clears throat> so the certain yeah the cursor slows over things for for aim assist exactly so that's uh that's very very interesting very cool actually i think it'd be great to see what uh um you know basically how many games how, how many how quickly games and uh, developers actually adapt to that and also this also opens up potential for other games to be released on PC or sorry, on Xbone that previously weren't, you know, like, I don't know, any point and click adventure, I guess, that didn't necessarily want to use the mouse to move around. Uh, honestly, though, probably not very many. <laughs> like, because it's not going to be a widely adapted thing. It's going to be it's just basically a bridge to get more folks to kind of cross pollinate between the two Microsoft platforms. And that's pretty much it. So, um, yeah, kind of uh, touch base a little bit. What is this? Uh, we still got, we're still talking about it. Uh, I bet it's Microsoft paying for it. Razer is a trendy accessory and Microsoft wants that cool appeal for the younger kids. Oh, yeah, it might, it might be. It might be. Is Razer cool? I don't know what's cool. <laughs> uh, I've had bad experience with like the one, I had like one Razer thing in my life but it did not live up to my expectations. I was pretty upset about that. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they probably make good quality products overall. I'm sure. Um, maybe. Uh, speaking of games that aren't being released, yeah. Uh, hey, I know you... Uh, you don't engage in them out of respect for Josh Blizz, but what's up? What's your take on private servers? My take on private servers? Um, I can't endorse them. That's all I can say. I can't, I mean, I can't endorse them, obviously. Uh, out of respect for, for Josh, of course. Um, I also feel like, I don't know. 
that's pretty much all I got. Yeah, just out of respect for Josh, I couldn't endorse him. And that's pretty much it. I, I, I honestly, honestly, I couldn't tell you what, what my opinion of it would be if I didn't know Josh. Because I could say, well, you know what, if I didn't know Josh or like anybody else at Blizzard, I might just fucking do it. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, doing what I do now, I don't know when I would have time to play Classic WoW, honestly. So I don't even know if I would even bother trying it. Uh, but I know too many people there. Uh, and I have way too much respect for for Josh and other folks that obviously work there to uh, uh, to promote that. So, And that's based off of my experiences. So I can't really, you know, deviate from that. Um, but I am looking forward to playing it. Legit. You see, uh... The only way to controller is to have fun is with the massive aim assist and there's no possible way to get paid. Yeah, it's true. I mean, like, controller without aim assist is really fucking hard. Because you actually have to, actually have to actually aim. You play games that, are, that have, like, aim assist on it, it's like, you get used to it with a controller, right? And you do that your whole life, and then you play, you then just, I think, like, Destiny actually could turn it off. Uh, and it's like, <laughs> suddenly you're like, whoa, I'm missing these shots that I normally would just make. It's quite the adaptation to take that off after using it for so many years. Uh, from a neutral point of view, I don't like the fact that private servers compete with the company running it. But I think the work that goes into them is very important, if only for the archival preservation of game preservation preservation purposes. Let's say this. Let's say if it wasn't for private serv excuse me, private servers gaining in popularity like they did and offering the service that they did, and making people as happy as they did, uh, we wouldn't have classic WoW. So sometimes, you know, innovation is born from these deviations. Yeah, you know? and so that's something that we just have to kind of take and just be like, well, I wouldn't endorse them, but if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have this. So, um, yeah, you, you, you strive for the end goal, not so much for what's happening. <clears throat> Let's see. <sighs> do I know? Do you believe in private servers after an MMO shuts down? Oh, that's a good question. Um, if it's not available, honestly, if it's not available for any kind of legit play, um, and WoW doesn't count because WoW is still WoW, technically. Uh, then yeah, I would say if somebody could host it, because like I mean, there's um, I've been I've been in and out of uh, this game that is no longer hosted by the original company. It's called Ten Six Planet Visitor now. Uh, I've mentioned it a few times before. It's an it's an RTS slash FPS hybrid that's real. Just conceptually, it's really fucking cool. Uh, and I, and I, and I, I do this because I feel like, why hasn't anybody done it like recently? Because it's so, such a good thing. It's just not a trend that's currently hip. Uh, but yeah, it is, um, it's something that is only managed by private servers and the, the game is gone. The company that, that made the game is gone. So for me, it's just like, well, I just want to keep, keep playing this game. <laughs> I'm paying somebody to pay their bills, you know? So yeah, it's um I, I I would I would say if the game is gone, then yeah, fuck. Do it. <laughs> do it if you feel comfortable doing it. How's that? Don't break any laws in your country, by the way. Alright? I have to say that I think too. Uh Maple Star also did a similar thing where they released a server reboot that rolled the game back before Blizzard even did, did it. Yeah, well, I mean, don't forget there's uh there is uh uh what is it what did EQ call it? Like EQ ninety nine? No, no, that was the that was actually what EQ ninety nine was called. Um EverQuest progression servers, right? Progression servers. Project Project 99. Thank you, Zebrios. Yeah, Project 99. Um, yeah, that's where they basically they launched. And I actually got in. I think that's where the BFF report was based off of, which was hilarious because in the BFF report where I talk about uh, um, uh, Project 99, it was my first time touching EverQuest since... Well, shit. I mean, probably like ever because I think I played EQ2 like briefly in the military and that was pretty much it. Um... But anyways, yeah, it was uh, so interesting getting in there and seeing all the different changes, quality of life changes that we were used to at that time. Like even my take on what made EQ seem dated because of my quality of life improvements that I have in, in World of Warcraft in like what, 2013 or something like that, five years ago. Like even my take is now antiquated because WoW has changed and just MMOs in general have changed so much. It's just crazy. Yeah. So, so yeah, uh, Project 99, that wasn't the official, that wasn't the official name, was it? No, 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 was it? There was an official progression server that they launched. Oh, Project 99, well, that was the private server, wasn't it? I can't remember. You guys, you guys might remember. But anyways, original EQ was wildly different than current EQ. 
holy fuck <laughs> it's like it's just just like just like everything else um uh, but yeah um couldn't handle i couldn't handle mmo that actually involves talking to every npc for quests dude i know like saying words and shit in chat just crazy the project and i is a private server one official ones are just progression servers thank you there you go thank you kittens um i thought i thought it was progression servers man but yeah, the Project 99. If it wasn't for Project 99, progression service probably would have never happened. By the way, it's if you ever have a chance to like check out like like Project 99 or like that era of uh, original EQ, like please do. If anything, watch the BFF report where I cover EverQuest. It is like it is quite eye opening to see what MMOs were like 20 years ago. <laughs> but all of you guys are old, so you guys have already done, been there and done that. I think. All right, next story. Let's go. Come on, come on. We're slowing up here. So follow up to, I think like last week or something, right? It was last week, week before. Uh, well, last week is when the layoffs happened. So last week we did talk about news and we did uh, discuss this just a little bit. Uh, former Telltale employee sue studio for labor law violations in mass layoff. Uh, now, I am not, I am not um, uh, well versed in the labor laws of <clears throat> California, let alone anywhere else. Uh, <laughs> so it is, um, I know that as somebody who has hired and fired many people in the past, I have in my steps to get to the point where I have to hire or fire somebody. There's always all this legal shit around it. And it's always, it's always CYA, which is cover your ass. Right. <clears throat> and it's like, it's like, okay, well make sure you have documentation that this person was doing this thing. And, and is it enough things? And also, okay, so first did you give them a verbal? And then did you give them a, a, a written? And then did they put them on a PIP? Did you put them on a performance improvement plan? And then did you did you extend that? Did you do like a 90-day performance improvement plan? And then you, you fucking do all this stuff? And like, it's like, whoa, I don't want to fire this person anymore. Like now it's like not even worth my time. Like I, I'm, <laughs> maybe I'll just deal with this person for the next like year and hope they just leave because I'm just really not into this. And so to do all that with a single person, I know it's not the same as doing a layoff for a whole bunch of people, but I can tell you there's so much red tape around letting go one person, even though technically I think in California you could just fire somebody for no reason whatsoever, uh, is pretty insane. So, so it's just like, it's when you lay off 250 people, it's difficult to say from my perspective, it's like, wow, I can't even fire one person, let alone 250. I know it's a layoff and everything, and we've done layoffs before, and I've, I've been at, I've been the person handing out the layoff check and all that, but I didn't really, I, how, can we just do this? Like, it, it, it's it's crazy, and we did it, we did it at Zam, as a matter of fact. We did a layoff before we got laid off, <laughs> uh, and that was painful, too. That was fucking painful. I had, to, I had to tell Lindsay that we had to let her go. Isn't that shitty? Lindsay's like one of my best friends. <laughs> I had to tell her we were letting her go. Man, that's just the fucking worst. Um, but there was a bunch of steps we had to go through there just to let go of like, what was it, like eight people, 10 people or something like that that day. Um, <clears throat> it's fucking crazy. So do they have the ability to, uh, uh, or do they have legal standing here? Maybe. I mean, the class action lawsuit is, is happening then. And if they could prove that the, there's still money there to be made that could go into like whatever, whatever telltale, you know, coffer is like hidden in the back of somebody's <laughs> mansion or something. Like if they could find money then they could divvy it up amongst the, amongst this crew. You know, these guys didn't get, they didn't get a, um, uh, a severance package. They got nothing. They had no severance package, no nothing. So like, what, what, what can we, <laughs> what do they have to lose? It's a class action lawsuit. Some of them are like now trying to figure out what the fuck they're going to do, like on their next paycheck. Um, yeah, what do they have to lose? Do it. Get a class action lawsuit together and figure out what the hell happened. Uh, seeing, I mean, having all this stuff unfold, I mean, basically, Telltale ended up being, as we found out, a company that was living paycheck to paycheck. And they missed their last round of funding, I guess. And that was the end of it. It was like they they, they knew that they were on the cusp of, of like falling apart, as a lot of video game companies are. Um, it's just, that's this one caught us by surprise, I think, because we all thought they were successful because it was like, yeah, everybody loves, everybody loves Telltale games. Um, but yeah, so let me catch up on the comments here. Hold on. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> wait, you don't know about what? Oh, wait, sorry. I missed something. Wait, hold on. Uh, back in the day, a group of us worked at Zynga. Oh yeah. Since then, one of my friends had moved on to Telltale. Once, 
Uh, once he found out an ex-Zynga board member was taking the role of CEO, he immediately left knowing exactly what was coming, and here we are. Wow. Yeah, Kenzie used to work at Zynga, too, and she got uh, laid off. There was, like, the big layoffs that Zynga did two th two years ago, three years ago. Um, Now, Kenzie Kenzie's like a fucking boss. Uh, She works at Thekla. You guys Google that. T-H-E-K-L-A. You guys probably know what the Thekla is. Um, yeah, she's a fucking boss now, dude. Like, she's, she's fucking queen, queen of the gaming industry in, uh, in San Francisco. It's fucking crazy. Uh, at least that's, that's how I view it. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'm probably pretty close. She might agree with me. Um, Telltale's been living in a bubble. They tried to make too many projects at once. The Game of Thrones thing had no support from HBO financially and it failed on sales. Oof, man. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Wolf Among Us. Yeah, I mean, like, a lot of people have played Telltale games and have liked it. So I think it was, this is a shocker for a lot of folks that, um that this happened just that just the fact whoa you guys have no money but what about like all these like wildly popular games with all these accolades behind them like that just seems crazy but yeah i mean if you have a lot of projects going on and no financial backing uh, especially financial or uh through like a, an ip or something then that's gonna make things uh, a little bit difficult now personally i don't play any i don't play any um uh, I don't, I don't like any, any, cause I don't like the, the gameplay style. I'm kind of with kid. I, I don't really like the gameplay style personally, but I'll, yeah, I will watch somebody play, uh, you know, play through some of it, but even then it's just kind of like, meh. uh, yeah, I watch it. Yeah, I'll have you guys are like, yeah, I, I watch people <laughs> play it. My hot take on telltale games, uh, failure. I hated episodes and thus always waited for games to be complete. And without trying this always resulted in the games for sale for like $10 or less. That is a, so poetry, Batman. I love that poetry batman that is a very good point i never liked that that thing anyway i didn't i, I didn't like that those are all blank tabs you'll be fine uh i didn't like that um <clears throat> that system of episode episodical content um in this fashion where it's like you play the first game episode one and i was like oh, okay like back to the future here's an ip that i was like i was like yeah dude i would love that back to the future the game fuck yeah point and click adventure sure okay yeah i'll do that for a back to the future game uh, but then they released it like an episode, like five, how many episodes of that was there? Like five episodes? I don't even know. But it was like, it was, it, I, for me personally, I was just like, I'll just wait until, and I ended up getting like a humble bundle or something like that for like stupidly cheap, like way cheaper than, than the amount of money they put into it for sure. So like, <clears throat> they really do need to curl tail that, or like you said, life is strange. Does it, does it man? You know, I feel like life is strange. Does it because they have a compelling story and, um, and compelling gameplay that basically they've, they've reached some kind of uh zenith in their uh in their quality of content here that is actually like like allows them to continue doing this i mean everybody i follow has played life is strange i feel like or they're talking about it uh or they're reeling from something that happened in in life is strange um personally I've, I've never played it because the gameplay style feels a little bit like telltale where it's just kind of like a you know kind of just kind of a story you get a couple choices here and there choose your own like you know personality type thing it was like that kind of stuff it's like cool it's like watching an interactive movie um uh see uh, life is strange uh, uh hit a good niche and also the studio made one game at a time <laughs> yeah i know uh i played some life is strange because my ex is raving about it a while back yeah i think the game industry got too reliant on investors instead of success successes of their own game on the one hand it's really hard uh to live in california so maybe it's just getting too expensive to make games in california now without relying on investors yeah, that's fucking true. It is wildly expensive to live here now. Why? Just insane. In fucking insane to live in California, period. I'm not just talking about like the Bay Area, just period. Unless you're like in like Fresno or something. It might still be pretty reasonable out there. But I'm pretty sure the house prices out there are probably more than where some of you guys live, which is stupid because there's nothing in Fresno worth going to, period. Um, So it is, it is like so incredibly expensive to live out here that you have to be bringing in like six figures um in order to be you know viable period like there's no way you can't have two folks living in the same house making you know twenty five thousand dollars thirty five thousand dollars a year and live even remotely any kind of comfortable life uh, in the bay area so if the cost of living is so just so remarkable then why why can't there be uh then, the, then of course it makes sense that without investors and having all this money to kind of be thrown at projects uh, why can't that be? Gotta get my music going again. Um, that makes sense. Like that, that that's the reason why companies are uh, are folding. By the way, thank you for that poetry, Batman. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the the whole like episodical thing. I could see that being 
you know, being a, a good reason, a, a major reason why it's uh, uh, didn't really fall into a lot of gamers' uh, Steam lists. Uh, the game studio is famous for Walking Dead games. They promised that style of story game too. People forced to use crash. Yeah, yeah, we know. That's why we're all surprised that it happened. <laughs> uh, you might be right, Jay Canuck. Um, <laughs> even a big group, even a group of big streamers pulling three ten k. I have to share a house to afford a house in SF. I think. Oh yeah, that makes sense. No, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, there's 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 a common misconception that that streamers make a whole lot of money. I'm here to tell you that is not true. <laughs> um, you know, we 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 make. I feel like we make we make a living. We make we make okay money. I think. Uh, can I can I go out and get a, a job that makes more than this? Sure. Would I enjoy it as much as this? No, no. Uh, a lot of us do this for the like because we love to do it. Uh, at least I hope so. But people that are coming in thinking like this is gonna be my job, I'm gonna be the next ninja. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. That's just gonna hurt your own feelings. I think. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's um. It's, 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 I mean, it's a fun job. I love it. Obviously, I think, I feel like every, everybody that I, that I know of that streams regularly loves it. Except for Shizzle. He might not really enjoy it that much. <laughs> Just kidding. He likes it when he can play the games that he wants. How's that? Which actually, I think lately should be DayZ because everyone's talking about it now. Man. Um, I want to be the next Mike B without a cam and fancy lights. See? Anybody could do that. That's easy. <laughs> Super easy. Uh... <clears throat> Let me hit up Drake. Yeah, let me yeah, let me DM him on thing. I think successful streamers make about as much as professional buskers and panhandlers. Well, those guys make a lot of money though. <laughs> you need like a thousand regular viewers to, and even more so, is live a normal life as a streamer. Yeah, I, I can't. So, viewership doesn't necessarily translate um, into. This is kind of general streamer stuff, right? Um, somebody can have five hundred concurrence, right, or average, I say, um, and only have you know. 250 subs, right? And then some of us could have, what are we at right now? 102. And we have 100. I average, depending on what we're doing, right? I average between 80 and 110, right? <clears throat> right now we're at 100. I have like 350 regular subs, 250, I think, regular subs, uh, and then all, everything else is gifts from you guys, right? Hard to, I got to filter out the gifts. Um, so I have way more. So it's like, it's tough to really gauge what the, if you look at someone's viewership, you can't necessarily say, wow, he's got like a thousand viewers. He has, must have this many subs. Cause it's like fucking so uh, different from streamer to streamer. Um, he even told a biscuit had financial issues. Yeah, he had, he had a lot of money going out to a lot of places, but yeah, he had financial issues as well. To what extent? I don't, I don't honestly, I don't know. But um, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's fun. We love doing this stuff. We love doing this stuff. Hey, speaking of Fortnite, we talked about Fortnite earlier. I'm really bad at transitions, but this is what you get with DigiHoot 5.5, all right? So, speaking of Fortnite, sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, this tweet caught my eye. Someone retweeted it. Uh, so, I actually can't believe it. Fortnite has done something that has never happened before in the history of gaming. Cross-platform between everything. Absolutely brilliant. PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, Mobile. Now, you you may wonder, why is this such a big deal? And the big deal is that Fortnite got, or sorry, yeah, Fortnite, or Epic, or Tencent, got the Sony to come off their fucking high horse about, oh, well, we want players to play uh, on the, on the PS, the P, on PSN because of the quality of experience, or whatever the fuck they said, the, the, the experience of being on a play, whatever it was, it doesn't matter, it was an excuse, it was something that was like, oh yeah, it's just, uh, uh, they, yeah, they, they want to play on our, on our, on our platform, our player experience is superior, yeah, the superior way, or whatever it was, um, and <laughs> they, they lost that fight, I am fucking shocked, I am shocked, I am so shocked that Sony actually ended up uh, giving into this. Just crazy, just fucking crazy. Uh, and yeah, money wins. That really, that's what it is. It's, I, I, I retweeted this. It was, I, that's what I said. I was like, <laughs> "This is how big Fortnite is." It, it, and if you had any, if you had any, any notions that Fortnite is not as big as people make it out to be, you are wrong. <laughs> you are really, 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 really wrong. You should not, at this point in time, think that you don't have to like it. You don't have to like it. You know, I know, trust me, I'm, I'm right there with you. You don't have to like the game, but 
Uh, it is uh, definitely a man. It's like it's a it's a pop culture icon of a game. Isn't that fucking crazy? Isn't that just fucking insane? It's 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 uh, Minecraft for this generation. But anyways, I. <laughs> uh, uh, going to be available cross platform on all these uh, on all these different platforms and they say they patch out the uh, the accidental boob physics which was pretty funny too um yeah, i don't know if you, if you guys if you guys missed it i i was new news i totally missed that i should put it in here but basically uh they fucked something up in one of the models or one of the animations or something and the boob physics was actually turned on and it was moving just like you would see in like those classic those classic mmos you know where it's like you move the character a little bit and the breasts are just moving forever like just still going, you know, it was, it was pretty bad. So, but I think they patched that out already. They said it was embarrassing and I, I mean, I get it. Like, you know, I've never done any kind of like actual like modeling, like, but I, I could get where like they could go through and add an animation or do something and then untick a box that like lets loose, <laughs> that lets the dogs out. <laughs> and that's the reason why it happened. I don't know, man, but I'm sure it was a mistake or like one dev that thought he'd be funny or something. Uh, but it didn't really blow up into a, to a big thing. Um, Oh, does uh oh I don't you know I don't know any of the story I don't know the stories with the backers uh for uh for Fortnite I know that their original project was not gonna succeed without uh, Battle Royale for sure so um that seems like a very interesting subject though that we should probably expand upon another time but no seriously I'm dead serious like I don't I don't know anything about Fortnite's uh I, I was there I worked with the devs um uh while they were developing a Fortnite uh what was it called uh Save the Universe or Save the World or whatever. Uh, yeah, it just, like, I, I was there for, um, working with the devs on that stuff. We were talking about making tools for them. And then the game just fucking completely bombed. Well, we left, actually, so we couldn't make any new projects because Sam didn't have any staff. Um, they say, in different regions, they keep the boob physics on. Really? Is that really the case? I mean, I'm sure it probably is. Sure. <clears throat> uh, what is this? What's this link? Oh, man. It's you know what it is. It's a it's a bunch of kids, uh, basically uh, uh, dancing to uh, to a Fortnite thing, and you know what? All right, so it says it says it says uh, retweet to completely ruin someone's day, and it basically is like a bunch of kids doing like the uh, uh, doing the Fortnite dances, and and listen, <laughs> maybe maybe it's because I'm a dad or something, but I see this and it's like oh cool, all those kids like have something in common. You know, like they all, they all have something in common. That's I think I think that's awesome that all these kids actually, you know, can relate to one thing instead of having these like clicks, you know, where like they don't all like get along. Like right now at my son's school, like I feel like, you know, the kids don't all have any particular thing in common because he's in kindergarten, right? So he doesn't there's no like uh you know, kindergartners don't have any experiences yet because they're 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 all five or six, so they don't have any life to really fall back on or any experiences to share, or relate with other kids. And so it's like, you know, it's like, oh, this is great. All these kids can relate to this one thing and doing this stupid fucking dance and looking like a bunch of idiots, but so did we when we were young and did dumb shit. Uh so yeah, for me it's just like it's like, yeah, you know what? It's like a bunch of kids relate to something. I think that's awesome. Uh but boy, they're gonna cringe when they watch that video later. <laughs> Hundred percent gonna cringe when they watch that video later when they're older. Hey, look, that's me. Yep, that's me. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's a little cringy, but still, I think it's great. Good, good, good for those kids. Um, what's the last time a video game made you dance? Uh, dance, dance revolution. Hello. <laughs> yeah. See, see, <laughs> that wasn't that long ago. Or I wish it was a long time ago. I should take that back. Uh, on the other side, there's a child that misses a year of school for playing, uh, because of playing Fortnite. Oh, yeah. Is that the case? I'm sure there's some, uh, someone out there. Let me, oh, man. I had, I had this. <sighs> okay. So, speaking of these badass little kids, right? Uh, I'm at, I'm at my kid's daycare center to pick them up yesterday. And this girl walks out. And, you know, the daycare, like, it supports, like, up upwards of, like, the, like, fifth grade or something like that. So, there's a pretty, like, big group that I think most daycares do that. Um, and this girl, she like, there's, there's like a, uh, I think she was going to like a karate class or something like that. So she had like a staff, like a bow staff and she was holding it and she was like kind of playing with it. And I was standing in the office waiting for Declan to come out and she like almost hit me and I kind of just moved out of the way, but she didn't like, she didn't say anything. Right. And, and the girl that she was talking to was like, Oh, you almost hit that man. And she just kind of looked at me, like, just kind of looked at me like, and then looked away. And I was like, whatever, all these kids are like that. Right. 
But then she tells the other girl, she says, I don't care. I hit my dad with this. And I was just like, it, I didn't, it didn't even like register at first. It didn't even register that this little, this little fuck had said something so like, I don't even forgot about it until right now. I couldn't believe my face or my face. I can't believe that face. That's what that was. I couldn't believe like what she had said. And I thought for a second, it's like, it's like, what do I, can I, like, what do I, what do I do right now? Like, do I tell this little badass little kid? Like, hey, fuck you, you piece of shit. <laughs> like, what, <laughs> am I, am I allowed to be here? Yeah. Like, like can I, what, what can I, I, mean, I wouldn't do that obviously, but like, but, but still it's like, I'm in the office there's like a bunch of other parents around and the staff and everything. She said that just loud enough where I, I, she said it just loud enough for a friend to hear, but not so much so that, uh, uh, so that, um, anybody else in the office could hear. And it's like, it would be my word against hers. You think this cute little fucking bitch is going to be like, oh yeah, I told him, I told him I'd hit him with this. No, she's gonna be like, oh, this, oh, this old man is like beat me, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I I, I I didn't know what to do. I did I did I mean it was it all happened so fast too because Declan comes out and he's like hi dad dad like right at that moment I'm like hey son I guess we're gonna leave got punked by a kid my wife's looking at me like what yeah I didn't tell you the story about this uh this little like ten year old or something like that that said that uh, that almost hit me with a staff but I'll tell you later <laughs> but but if I see her again. If I see her again, I'm going to give her a piece of my mind. No, I probably will tell her. After I left, I was like, no one ever taught you any manners, little bitch. I thought I'll probably leave the little bitch part out. But it's like, I, I should tell her at least, like, you know, it's like, like your parents didn't teach you any manners. That's the problem with you. Like, that's your, that's your problem. It's not, it's not that, oh, yeah, I'm say my dad. It's like, no, like your parents just have no control over you whatsoever. Ugh. And it's like, I, I would, if Declan ever tried some shit like that, boy, if Declan ever tried some stuff like that, I'm telling you. I don't even know what I would do. He would never do that, though. Not my son. No. 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 Uh, <laughs> if Mike bumps into her in a dark alley, listen, I'm not going to do any, I'm not going to have no physical violence toward this little girl. If anything, I might just talk to her parents. Right? And you know what they'll say? They won't say anything. They'll just look at me and stare, and then they'll take their kid and walk away because nobody talks to anybody, even if you literally are talking to their face. That's the way it works out here. It's fucking silly. <clears throat> Anyways, so hey, you went the wrong. <laughs> you better watch your back, kid. <laughs> you gonna be eighteen one day. <laughs> I'm gonna be like fucking fifty five years old holding a grudge against some little kid. <laughs> oh, you an adult now, <laughs> ready for that ass whipping? <laughs> That's not gonna happen. <laughs> My little sister, who are uh, uh, who are young enough to practically be with daughters, clocked me in the chin really well. We were play fighting. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I mean she was in karate. She might have been able to kick my ass or at least hurt at least a little bit. But there was there was not a whole lot of room. Inside that office. I don't really feel like she would have gotten a good swing in before I could snatch it up and snap and break it in half. So I'm, I'm pretty sure we're good there. <laughs> uh, tell the parents that if they don't get to handle the daughter, your son is going to end up knocking her up. Oh, man. I, yeah, that's that would be a good, you know, I mean, especially you know, so long as Declan's pretty cute, right? So as long as it continues being a cute kid, I might be able to use that one day. You know, I'll be like, I was like, you see this kid? You know what? You know what his favorite thing is? He likes drawing. It means he's an artist, which means he's going to grow up and have no money. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make sure he hooks up with your daughter. So you keep pulling that shit with your kid and my kid. Guess what? It's your son-in-law. Right? You watch. <laughs> that, is, that is the perfect defense. Man. Man. <laughs> I see you bitches at Thanksgiving. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, man. All right. So. <laughs> the last, the last thing on the list, it's a small thing. The last thing on the list that we have, it's a small item, but we should at least talk about it and mention it just in case you missed it, because the first thing was kind of, kind of a big deal if you owned a Switch. So maybe if you don't own a Switch, this is the end of the show for you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, but Switch Cloud saves are actually saved for, stored for six months no, Bowsette is not coming to the Switch. The first thing you jump on, Bowsette is coming to the Switch. It's gonna be in Smash. No, no, it's not. Uh, Switch Cloud says are actually stored for six months. So there you go. <laughs> it's uh, I, I saw this and I was like, oh, cool, because we all made a big deal about how dumb Nintendo was for like you because they were like, oh yeah, once your your if your payment lapses, then 
you lose all your saves. And it was like, well, that sucks, even though it's saved locally or something. But still, uh, it still sucks to like have a server just kind of just, just disappears. So they did. They said they clarified. Uh, this is like a, this is like two weeks later. <laughs> like, how do they? <laughs> Come on, man! It's like two weeks later already. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, you have to pay. Yeah. By the way, this is a part of their paid online service. That was the whole point. Is that you pay for the service, and then once it elapses for whatever reason, the it, it seemed like it would actually dump all your saves, and that would suck. Uh, again, you would still have a local copy. Um, I guess unless you're using multiple uh, multiple switches, in which case that might be kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, but still, but still. Um, Scylla is going to use homebrew to make local backups until they get their heads out of their asses. To make local backup, yeah. Wait, homebrew on the Switch? Really? I mean, you shouldn't do these kinds of things. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that. But I'm going to have to look that up. Um, <clears throat> so... That is pretty much it for news. I mean, there are, like, peripheral things. I guess that kind of happened. Uh... I will say that uh, coming up next week, I have a few Andy for breakfast, and one of them I feel like you guys are probably already well aware of, but uh, I've been having a difficult time actually tackling it. It's a game called, let me close all these bazillion windows. They're all blank tabs, by the way. We're all okay over here. My RAM is fine. But a game called CrossCode. Maybe you guys have heard of it. Uh, it is a... Uh, a crystalis like maybe crystalis crystalis um it's an rpg and it kind of plays like you could say stardew valley faster pace uh you could say link to the past more depth uh crystalis more bits uh it there's a there's a few games that are kind of in this realm but man this one is this one does it so Fucking well. The execution on this and the depth and the amount of stuff you could do and the combat and the, the depth of the RPG-ness of it uh, is just insane. I do I have a I have a relatively in-depth uh Indie for Breakfast on this coming out uh hopefully Monday. I have three Indie for Breakfast lined up for next week. Uh Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I want to try to get back into the rhythm of getting those things out at least three times a week. Cause right now my 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 feed is flooded with the uh, Don't Starve episodes. So I would like to get that thing moving. So that's that's what you can expect. Monday, in-depth look at cross code. But that's it, guys. That's it for news. It only took us uh, an hour and a half or so. Pretty good, right? Pretty good. We're getting we're getting faster. We don't necessarily need to go too fast. We're going just fast enough uh, to uh, to get all this news covered, keep a good pace, keep you guys uh, um, you know in the conversation. It's kind of nice. Like it is. It's DigiWho.5, pretty much. I love it. Um, so yep, the trailer looked good. The game is good. The trailer looked good, uh, but the game is super good. It's got like 90 hours of content. Well, that's exaggeration. Sorry, it's like 60 to 80 hours of content. Uh, and I could tell you just from like how long I've been playing and then getting a, uh, um, uh, and then only being as far in as I am. Yeah, that, 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 that seemed like it's pretty fucking spot on. So that's it. Yeah, it's cross code. I need for breakfast coming up next week along with, uh, uh, Skater, Skater Callie and Barbarian spelled with a bear. I use that joke twice in that episode. So you can look forward to hearing that again. That's it for news. Should I end it with a thing? Should I push the button and end the thing? That's what I'll do. That's what I'll end it. I'll end the VOD right there. All right. Bye, YouTube. <laughs> there you go. Hey! Back to the live show. <laughs> what is that? Two, uh, let's see. Two, did I get the marker in? Let me see. Yes, I got a marker in, I think. Cool. About today is any for breakfast. Did you find out that the messenger isn't isn't an easy game yet? Yeah, towards the end of the episode, I think I kind of figured it out. Uh, yeah, if you watch the whole thing, you'll see like towards the end, I get my ass kicked by a boss, and then it's just kind of like, well, <laughs> I forgot the shameless plugs. Oh, I did forget the shameless plugs. You're right. You're right. Unless I cut the vod later, in which case I could say, hey, no. <laughs> Wait, maybe I should. Of follow me on Twitch and. TV slash aka Mike B and twitter.com slash aka Mike B and and everything else uh aka Mike B or aka Mike Photo if you're if you're into that kind of thing. Uh yeah please do that. Alright. Now we're now we're gonna we're just gonna Photoshop this in later. <laughs>